Hey guys, Mark Frashi, ProTech Dog Training. I've got Buddha in the holding pen. This is his first morning here. We just walked around yesterday, got a feeling for the dog. He's got a great temperament. So um, he's really just got a huge heart, big dog. He does light up on most of the dogs in the, in the area. So I had to do a lot of work this morning to, rotating my dogs and making sure he wasn't out in his holding pen because I don't want him to rehearse the negative behavior of going off. You guys have probably seen this before. I call this inner city mentality where you'll have the guys, some of the guys in the inner city and they'll have uh, the big old pities and the bullies and they'll tie a huge old chain on the neck and they'll tie him up to a tree and he's in the yard and the kids are coming by to and from school, that kind of thing. And the dog's out there lunging, going crazy or he's behind a, a, a fence and a yard is a lower fence and the dog's going nuts as the kids come by. This is not a good thing. It's, it's allowing the dog to rehearse negative behaviors and become very aggressive uh, with their natural instincts. You're talking pity breeds, right? Bullies or like this guy, this uh, Argentinian Dogo, this Dogo Argentinian. They're, they're, they've got that propensity. They've got that stuff. They, if you let this get out of control, you've got yourself a dangerous dog and that's what ends up happening. So with him, what we're going to do is he's got a great temperament with people. He seems to be pretty stable. I won't know that much until I get him out in public but he seems like he's a very stable guy but he does have the tendency and natural propensities of the breed to light up on other dogs so I won't bring that into and start making him mind and, and be subservient to the obedience till I get a good relationship and get a lot of this uh, heel sit down stay going and then I will slowly start bringing out a female introducing him to the female making him work and keeping him subservient to the obedience and making sure he understands he's not allowed to be stupid right um, and then we'll slowly work him into environment that'll that'll take off that edge in regard to being a dog fighter. We don't want him to have these propensities because it's just not a, a good thing. I don't believe in it. There's a lot of guys that do maybe, but it's not my thing. So I go the other way and I try to make the dog a very stable, well-developed animal that it's, um, that's productive in society. You know, That's what I specialize in is companion dogs, to be able to take a dog any place I go, friendly and fine, and then until I need him to do the job. So with this guy, because he is so stout, we've got to be real um, diligent, and think things through. So I made sure that I had none of my dogs were around that fence line where he's got a holding pen in the back, back where I'm at, so that he uh, doesn't get to see this and be behind that boundary type of aggression where he wants to go crazy at the on the other side of the fence. If I do that, he's got rehearsing the behavior, right? And that'll become more and more prevalent. So I've got to be real careful that I try to keep that away from him as much as possible until I get him doing what he needs to do with the obedience and we get some development out of him. And then I'll slowly start, uh, incrementally, start putting it on him where he has to learn to be friendly with people. So let me go ahead and get him. I'm going to start trying to work with a table and just get him coming to the hot dogs, starting to associate with a clicker and that kind of thing. We're going a little faster than I normally go because he's such a, a good dog as far as temperament. So let me get a leash. Give me a second here, guys. You can hear me, but you can't see me. Good boy, boy. Good boy. All right. Good boy. Come on, Buddha. And Buddha's natural tendencies is to be like a bull in a china shop. No control at all. And he's just really uh, exuberant with everything he does. Buddha. Good, yeah, good boy, good. That's a boy, good. That's a boy. Let me get my clicker. Good. Good. And see where his head's at. He's very receptive. He didn't eat his food yesterday because he just came in, so he's a little upset, so he didn't eat his food. So he's hungrier this morning, so I'm going to take advantage of that, right? I'm always thinking ahead, thinking things through as far as the development of the dog. I've analyzed that what his breed is, what his natures and tendencies are. He doesn't know it. I'm not giving him a command because he doesn't know it yet. I'm just trying to get him to fall on it. Yep. Good boy. Good. There you go. Into a down position. Come on, baby. He probably does know the word down, but yeah, I like the fact he's hungry. He likes those hot dogs. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Hop. Hop. Good. Good boy. Nope. Good. There you go. Drop it below the wall. See how this is so far down that he's going to want to maybe go down? Just trying to let him do things without any pressure right now. Good. Come on. Come on. Nope. No. All right. Yep. Good boy. Good. And I want to get that explosion lease off the table to start. Come on. So this is his first session. You're seeing it right now. Other than me just bonding with him and giving him hot dogs as a bonding tool, I haven't done much anything as far as trying to get him to do behaviors, right? Good boy, good. And we'll keep this 
bonding and building friendship and, and uh, relationship because this is the key. If I want to put pressure on him and start trying to correct him into everything, you're going to have a relationship problem with a big boy like this. That may become a very major problem. Much better to keep him happy and into the, yep, good boy, into the work so that he enjoys it, right? You build on that relationship from that. I can always wait until later when I start putting pressure on him and make him realize the dominance of my relationship with him. Me, me being dominant over him as far as what I expect. Now all I'm trying to do here now is encourage him into what I want. I'm not gonna say the word. I'm just gonna try to tie the clicker into it. He doesn't know it yet, but he's getting robbed of food. He's not getting what he wants, right? Good, good boy. Nope, now I'm gonna try to say the word down, see if he knows it, down. Come on, down, nope. Good. So we need to build in our markers, right? No good and yes, right? So that's our first objective. Yep. Good boy. And as he gets more and more receptive to the hot dogs with patience, eventually he'll start going down, right? Now I'm going to introduce him to the, come on, good, good boy, good. The other thing I was telling the owner yesterday is when I work a dog like this, or any of my dogs really, I always try to approach it like an Olympic athlete. I want to build muscle. And I want to be uh, conscientious and aware of the dog's body. This guy's got a big old frame. I'm not going to let him go over that six-foot fence and jump, jump down and be pounding his, his bones. He's only six months' age. He's still growing, right? He's still got a lot of growth to do. So I'll, I'll do agility, but the agility will be small little leaping like this, little uh, ramp over here, the park benches, small stuff that will build muscle. Muscle carries bone, right? It will carry this frame. So the more muscle I can get on him, the better that frame will be carried by that. So there'll be a lot of uh, little twitch muscle stuff like, yep, on and off the table. Even this little stuff again and again and again is going to end up building muscle. Come on. Good boy. Good. And I'll try my down again. Nope. And I'm putting my hand over the nose, right? I'm putting a little bit of pressure down on that nose to give him an idea. I'm just trying to convey the idea to the dog of what I want. On him. I'm not going to correct him into it. I'm just going to let him find it, right? He's going to do it on his own eventually. And when he does, I'm going to click, I'm going to treat. I'm going to try to start tying that click in with the reward, right? Good boy, good. Come on. Come on. You're such a pain in the butt. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah, I'm good. Come on. Come on. Good boy, good. Nope. Good, that's my boy, good. There he goes, good boy, good. Allowed me to bring in some voice. Good, come on. Nope, come on. Notice I'm not giving it to him, it's locked in my hand until he does what I want. I might break and do something else. Good, I'm gonna go over approximation on that one. He's not all the way down. <laughs> And the other thing I noticed, this table may be too small for you, buddy. You're a big old boy. <laughs> yep. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Good boy. Very receptive to voice tone, right? Good boy. They love to be loved. They're a big old ham for their families, boy, I tell you. And once they grow into those hormones, I wouldn't want to mess with his family, especially if you got some training behind them. We're going to get them. They want to go the whole way. Good, be a family protector. And so the biggest thing I care about right now is how we develop this dog to have a, uh, a want for the work and that he understands what he's supposed to be doing and then we bring up drive for the work, right? We'll get that as we go along. Come on, come on. You boy, good. Oh, yo, yo, good boy, good. Yep, good boy, good, yay, good boy. <laughs> good boy, good. Nope, nope. Good. Everything's an opportunity. Notice he wanted to go get that hot dog right away. I put that no in there, right? So he starts to learn from it. Now, he hasn't learned these bowls at all, so we'll try to see if I can get him to step on it. And we're just playing here, right? This is where it all starts because the understanding, the markers are still always the same. Even if he doesn't give me full stuff, good. I got both feet up there now, right? Good. Yep. And now I'll go to the second bowl and I'll try to get him to understand he's want, I want him to step on it. And there he goes. It doesn't take much with a smart, intelligent dog. This guy is intelligent. He's just never been worked. Good. That's my boy. Yep. Good boy. And then my yep is my explosion release, right? So you hear me saying that every time I break from one spot to another, it's yep. Off the table, it's yep.
Good. That's a boy. Good boy. That's Buddha. Buddha's a great name for a dog like him. That's a perfect name for you, huh, Buddha? Huh? Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Up. Good boy. Vocabulary is very important for me right now as I build my relationship. You want to get a drink. You want to go bye-bye. I'm all the vocabulary that's contextual in his environment. Good. Good. And now we're going to break off with this. It doesn't need to be long. And we're going to go do agility and do some other stuff on the thing and just have a friendly relationship. We're building bond. We're building relationship, right? Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, good boy. Yeah, good boy. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, that's my boy. Good. Give me that other paw. Come on. Give me that other paw. I'm trying to get him to step into that down, right? He doesn't want to pull that other paw. There he goes. Good boy. Good boy, good. That's my boy, good. And now our explosion release. Yep, good boy. Yay, good boy, in the drive. All right, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, and Buddha. Come on, Buddha. And he's like a bull in a china shop. He's just big old clumsy oaf. A lot of it's the control that they need to, so he doesn't squash somebody in the family. <laughs> good boy, good. And I won't try to get a stay because he won't do it. Yep. Good boy. I'd rather get into my explosion release right now. All right, guys. Mark Fresh, Protect Dog Training, and Buddha. Have a good day, guys.